You may have heard about some of the most famous rivalries in history. Some to come to mind are the British-French rivalry, the Ottoman-Russian rivalry, the Roman-Carthaginian rivalry, or the Greco-Persian rivalry. But one of the longest rivalries in history was the Roman-Persian rivalry. The first direct contact between both empires was in 92 BC when the then governor of Cilicia, Sulla, made contact with an embassy from the Parthian Empire. Sulla was campaigning in Cappadocia to restore Arobazanes I to the throne of Cappadocia, who was driven out by Mithridates VI of Pontus to install one of his sons on the throne of Cappadocia. Sulla became the first Roman magistrate to meet a Parthian ambassador. At this meeting, Sulla took the seat between the Parthian ambassador and the king of Cappadocia. The king of Parthia took this as betraying the Cappadocians and Parthians as equals, and Rome as superior. The Parthian ambassador was then executed on his return to Parthia. Sulla himself would be criticized for this tough negotiations with such a powerful nation. The first time the Romans and Persians came into direct military contact was when Lucullus, a closely connected general and statesman to Sulla, invaded Armenia in 69 BC, which led to clashes on the frontier of Parthia and Armenia. Sixteen years later, Marcus Lucinius Crassus invaded Parthia and was decisively defeated at Carhe. The Parthians reportedly poured molten gold down the throat of Crassus as a symbolic mockery of his thirst for wealth. With the assassination of Orides II of Parthia by his own son Ferides IV, Marcus Antonius or Mark Antony prepared to invade Parthia. Antony realized that Octavian had no intention of sending him additional legions which was promised under the Treaty of Tarentum, which renewed the triumvirate for another five years. His lover, Cleopatra VII of Egypt, backed this Parthian invasion. This Roman Egyptian army was around 200,000 troops, which was twice the size of Crassus's force. Antony's first target was Armenia, who was traditionally a Roman ally, but after Crassus's defeat, Armenia was forced into an alliance with Parthia. Antony had success in Armenia, which the king there surrendered without any opposition. Publius Canidus Crassus was sent to the Caucasus, where success was found too. The Parthians would not engage with Antony, which caused Antony to move deeper and deeper into enemy territory. Two legions, which roughly is 10,000 men, were then ambushed and destroyed. Here, Antony's supplies and siege engines were destroyed. After a failed two-month-long siege, Antony was forced to retreat. This retreat was a disaster, as Antony's demoralized army faced supply issues in the mountainous terrain, and were constantly ha harassed and attacked by Parthian forces. Antony finally made it back to Syria. 80,000 men, or two-fifths of his army, perished in Antony's campaign. The first Roman Emperor, Augustus, was unwilling to seek further conflict with the Parthians. Augustus would give Musa of Parthia, an Italian slave girl, to the Parthian king Ferides IV. Musa became a favorite of Ferides and gave birth to a son, Ferides, who would become Ferides V in 19 BC. Later, in 2 BC, Musa had Ferides IV poisoned and made herself and her son co-rulers. The Parthian nobility, angered by Ferides V's acknowledgement of Roman dominance in Armenia and his mother's Italian descent, overthrew them and installed Orides III as king. Musa and her son fled to Rome, where Augustus welcomed them with open arms. 
The next century would not be as hostile, but antagonistic, with emperors like Claudius supporting pretender kings. But during Nero's reign, King Volagases I invaded Armenia and made his brother king. The result was a compromise, which allowed Parthian prince Tiridates and his descendants to be kings of Armenia, on condition that his successors would be crowned in Rome and to be ruled as a client kingdom of Rome. We barely scratched the surface with the fierce rivalry, but in the next episode we shall talk about the rivalry during the Flavian dynasty to the fall of the Western Roman Empire. Make sure you are subscribed and ring the bell so you know as soon as the second video comes out.